Some people enjoy playing combat games on video systems, while others prefer to exchange the controller for a fake weapon, dress up in costume, and act out the fantasy with those who share the same passion. It's called live-action role-playing, and there's typically a medieval or apocalyptic theme to it. These weapons sure look like the real thing, so much so that this company also sells them as film and theater props. But as menacing as these axes and swords appear, they couldn't even hurt a fly, because their blades are made of latex. In the weapons workshop, they begin the sword-making process by constructing the blade. After tracing a template on a centimeter-thick piece of flexible, waterproof foam, they cut out two blade halves with a utility knife. After slitting one of them down the middle, they glue in a rigid, centimeter-thick fiberglass core. This makes the sword blade stiff enough for combat, yet flexible enough to not break. Next, they glue a strip of durable polyester fabric over the core. This acts as reinforcement, preventing the tip of the core from poking through the foam. Now they glue the second blade half over the first one, sandwiching the core. The glue is a rubber-based adhesive that bonds with pressure, which they apply with a heavy marble rolling pin. Next, using a band sander, they sculpt the blade's cutting edges. Then they remove the foam residue with a rotary tool. They take a wood-burning iron and melt the foam in select spots to create the look of battle scars. They spray on five to six coats of latex rubber. This forms a protective shield over the foam without hindering the blade's flexibility. Using an airbrush, they apply two coats of acrylic-based latex paint, first black, then silver. They brush on a thick coat of black paint, then wipe it off. This wash, as it's called, creates the look of aged metal. And finally, they lightly dab some silver acrylic paint over select spots to highlight details. From foam to main component of a lethal weapon in just a few easy steps. They finish off their handiwork by stenciling on the company logo in gold acrylic paint. Now for the sword's handle. They drill a hole lengthwise through a cylinder made of walnut and glue a steel tube inside. Then they glue leather around the wood. And wrap a leather ribbon around it for decoration. To give it a worn appearance, they lightly sand parts of the surface. To make ornate handles, an artist first sculpts the model out of linden wood. Using that wooden model, they cast a silicone mold. Then they pour rubber into the mold to cast a handle. For that leather-covered wooden handle, they cast only the components above and below it in rubber. After trimming off the excess rubber, they paint it to look like metal. To assemble the sword, they glue the handle components onto the core, which protrudes from the base of the blade. First, they position the guard. It stops the opposing sword from sliding down past the blade and cutting your hand. Next, the handle. And last, the pommel. It blocks the end of the handle to prevent the sword from sliding out of your hand. Each sword this workshop creates comes with a scabbard, a protective leather sheath. They boil and wax the leather to make it rigid. The workshop also makes daggers and other realistic-looking weaponry. All you need to bring out your inner warrior.